Hey, thanks for tuning in to Celebration today. Hopefully you got a full cup of coffee, you got your Bible, you're ready to hear a good word. Our theme at Celebration for 2020 is called Rooted, where we want to be more rooted and established in love uh, more than ever before. And I know today's word is going to help your roots to grow down deeper into Him, for sure. Well, why don't you take your Bible or your device, whatever you're using, and let's make our declaration here today. Are you ready? Come on, let's say it together. This is the inspired Word of God. It is a lamp unto my feet, a light to my path, the truth that transforms my mind, the sword that destroys my flesh, and the water that refreshes my soul. Today I will hear the Word, live the Word, and it will be fulfilled in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to start off by asking you an interesting question. Are you a milky believer or a meaty believer? Are you a milky Christian or a meaty Christian? Now, before you type your comments in the chat window, and I want you to kind of engage with me today, just you better wait until you figure out, you know, where we're going with this here today. Uh, now, a couple weeks ago, we looked at the parable of the soils, how God's the farmer, uh, Jesus and the Word is the seed, and we know that there's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed is good. Where the seed is planted, uh, the Word is planted, it's going to grow. It's going to be fruitful. But where the seed lands when it is sown, that's the important part, uh, the condition of the soil. And so the question we asked a couple weeks ago was, how's your dirt? How good is your dirt? And some of you responded by saying, you know, it's kind of hardened right now. Uh, some things have happened. Maybe you've uh, disappointed, maybe even in God, or, and so you're hardened towards God, or maybe other people, you've been hurt. And so your soul, you, you, the soil, your soul, the condition of your heart, you're, you're kind of hardened right now. Some of you said, shallow, man, I'm all over the place. Kind of being tossed to and fro, it seems. Uh, there's just a lot of insecurity, uh, instability right now. Uh, my, my spiritual life is pretty shallow. Others of you said uh, you're kind of overcrowded. Man, there's so much going on, chaotic uh, things happening right now. Uh, there's not a lot of room for some of the good stuff to grow. And then others of you said, my soul is pretty good. I've been working it. Uh, I've been preparing my soil, and, and that's awesome. So whatever condition you're in, uh, you know, it's, I just appreciate your honesty. Now today we're going to look at a few verses in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 5 and chapter 6, so you can kind of get ready for that. We'll put them up on the screen as well here this morning. Now these verses, and, and really the whole book was written to Jewish converts, those that were coming out of Judaism, uh, if, you know, following the law, and into Christianity. However, this group of people were, they were kind of teetering on reincorporating Judaism with a little bit of Jesus on top. Uh, and at points, there's so, some words in here and, and some verses that might seem to be a little overly critical to somebody who's new in the faith or somebody who's a, a babe in Christ who still needs milk. But this, these verses were really written to people who should be eating meat by now. Now, let's, why don't we jump into the text here. We'll start with verse 11. Look what it says here. Again, he, the writer says this. There's much more we would like to say about this, but it's difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. Ooh, that's kind of an ouch, isn't it? This is God saying this, not me. All right. He goes on to say, you have been believers so long, and I can imagine if they were texting it, they'd add a bunch of O's on to uh, so, so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you, again, the basic things about God's Word. You are like babies who need milk. There it is, milky Christians, milky believers, uh, and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk, there it is again, is still an infant and doesn't know. Infants don't know. They need to be taught. They need to be trained. It needs to be modeled. So as an infant, you just don't know what to do and, and you know what is right. Solid food, there's, there's the meaty 
uh, believer is for those who are mature, who through training have, um, have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again and again. Can you hear him kind of just really exasperated with that? He says, let's go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need to further instruction about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead. Now, you may look, yeah, I, I need some more help there, <laughs> and that's good. Uh, or even the fundamental teachings about eternal judgment, you know. And so, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. So, he's saying, come on, we got to we got to move forward. Have you ever felt that way in your own spiritual life? You feel stuck. You should be further down the road. You should maybe know more. You shouldn't be so uh, topsy-turvy and movable, uh, kind of swayed by anybody's opinion. You just uh, really lack maybe that solid grounding or footing. Uh, you know, I think we all have seasons like that. Now, this whole idea of uh, milk. Let's let's talk about that for a moment. Milk is is good for you whether you're an infant or whether you're an adult. It strengthens the bones, but it's especially important for a child and especially for an infant. An infant needs uh, a mother's milk. Now, fortunately, there are substitutes that you know give good nutrients to an infant, um, but an infant needs uh, milk. They they couldn't eat meat. They they need milk, and that's. One of my fondest memories uh, with raising our kids is, is just seeing Connie nurse our children. It was just a beautiful thing to see the bond between mother and child. Uh, now, a healthy baby uh, craves milk. Whining, when they're whining to eat, that's a good sign. It means they have an appetite. There's a, a desire there. Now, we had uh, raised a couple litters of labs. Our first litter was 13, and then our second litter was 15 little black labs. <laughs> wow, was that exciting. And we were so happy when those little pups would latch on uh, to their mother for, for milk. And we were so sad when there would be maybe the runt of the litter or a couple of them that just didn't seem like they had an appetite. Maybe they lacked the uh, development of their digestive system or maybe they, you know, competition, survival of the fittest, and they grew weaker and weaker, and finally they just lost their appetite uh, to eat, and that was really sad. Wow. I love what Peter said in the scriptures. He said this, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk. There it is again. So that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this. That's why a baby cries out for it. And we as, as new believers, infant uh, Christians, cry out for this nourishment. Now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. So let me ask you this question. As a child of God, is there a craving? Is there a hunger for the things of God in your own heart, in your own life? If not... Maybe it's a sign that you're not well spiritually. What else is satisfying your appetite? What have you replaced God with? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you got a new job. Maybe it's a new business and that's consuming all your time and your energy. Maybe a new relationship. You got a boyfriend, you got a girlfriend, and all of a sudden, you know, you're so into them and everything else kind of falls by the wayside. Maybe it's a hobby that you've taken up, and all these things are good things, but oftentimes we can allow them to replace our relationship with God. And God says in His own word that He's a jealous God. And anything that gets in the way of that relationship, God becomes jealous. Isn't it good to know that we have, we have a jealous God? So jealousy isn't always bad because He knows so much about us. He knows that we... We cannot be divided in our loyalties. Uh, we can get so easily distracted. There's so many options, isn't there? And we can get filled up with everything but God. Just watching TV and seeing all the ads. Oh man, the marketing. There's so much marketing trying to get us to want and to buy something that we don't have. We feel like we need it. Oh man, if I had that kind of car, if I taking that kind of vacation, oh, 
Yeah, there's just so many ways that they try to sell us on things that we don't have. And, and again, they're good things. Probably nothing wrong with them. But if we're allowing them to replace and really satisfy our appetite versus our appetite for God, you know, we're going to run into problems. It's not going to satisfy. And really all it takes is losing something that maybe we've taken for granted or losing someone that we've taken for granted. We got caught up in the grasses greener on the other side and we lose track of what we have to pursue something that we don't have. All of a sudden now uh, we have fewer options, fewer, you know, some of the privileges were, were taken away. It's then that we understand the importance of what we have and, and life becomes a little more simple and this whole experience has stripped us of a lot of different things i mean i'm so ready for sports on tv <laughs> i'm going crazy especially coming through march madness and now the nba playoffs oh, and baseball see all that kind of stuff but it's amazing when all that is stripped away how much time i've had for other things important things so there's a lot of things in life that we allow to satisfy our appetite temporarily, but that may not always be good for us. Maybe uh, you would consider yourself a baby Christian, somebody new in the faith. Or maybe you know of somebody who started off uh, well, but they didn't get grounded. They didn't, they didn't have someone disciple them. They didn't stick around a, a long enough to, to develop. They became a spiritual orphan. Uh, maybe they missed out on having a spiritual mother, a spiritual father, or, or a mentor, somebody to kind of walk and guide them through life. Or maybe you've been saved for a long time, but you feel stuck. Have you been in those seasons where you're just kind of stuck? <laughs> you're saved, but you're still so filled with fear uh, or anxiety. You're saved, but you, know, you can find yourself really getting into some depressed thinking. You're saved, but you're addicted to something. You're saved, and, but you're still watching porn on your phone. You're, you're saved, uh, and you're turning 50, and you still don't know who you are and why you are. You're saved, and you're unable, at least you, it seems you're unable to control your temper, or you're unable to control your thought life. You're saved, but you're so dissatisfied with who you are. And really, any of these feelings or these states of being can take over. It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. They can take over if we let them, just like weeds. If you allow them to grow in your soil, in your soul, they can take over. So wherever you find yourself, and, and, and I want you to understand too, we're talking about being a milky Christian or believer and a meaty Christian or believer. Uh, I don't know that you ever arrive. Well, I know you don't ever arrive. He who began a good work in you is faithful to continue. So it's not something that, oh, finally I crossed the line. Now I'm, I'm rock solid. I think it's, it's a process that we go through and there's seasons where sometimes we can go back and forth. The writer here in Hebrews wasn't really talking to new believers who really do need milk. And for those of you who feel like you're kind of baby Christians, and you, you need some help with understanding how to read the Bible and learning how to pray and uh, why it's important to be involved in a church community. All those things are important, but these uh, indictments weren't really being addressed to you. The writer was writing to believers who had become spiritually dull and weren't seeming to listen because they, they've been believers so long, they're just not really listening anymore. It's like I remember being in the studio years ago and you're there hour after hour and sometimes you just got to take a break. You got to get out of the studio uh, because if you hear the same frequencies over and over, it can dull uh, your, your hearing sensitivities. And so you get out, uh, get some fresh air and you come back in, you get a whole new set of ears, fresh perspective. That's why I know some of you enjoy hearing Pastor Luke preach and Pastor Ben preach and Pastor Dave preach, or maybe when we have a guest evangelist here, because it's a new voice, it's a fresh perspective. They were spiritually sluggish, they were mentally lazy. I don't know about you, but I've felt that many times. I, sometimes just so demotivated, I don't want to do anything. 
Uh, oftentimes that's the signal for me. I got to get up and I got to move. I got to do something. Um, I need to go on a prayer walk. Uh, and so sometimes we can go through those things where we get stuck or we, we feel we're just spiritually sluggish. And here the writer is saying, you know, it's time for you to move on. Do we really need to go back and do all kinds of teaching on repentance and faith and baptism and laying on of hands and all those things that were listed there? He, he said it, it's time to move forward. God wants us to move forward. And if you think about it, uh, one of the promises in the Old Testament spoken over and over and over, especially in the book of Deuteronomy, is when God was promising his children a land flowing with milk and honey. Flowing with milk and honey. What did, what did that mean? I, when I would read that, I, I kind of pictured Willy Wonka and the Chocolate River kind of flowing. <laughs> but so it wasn't uh, in the land of Israel, it wasn't, uh, you know, rivers with milk and honey in it. No. What that meant was that milk was a symbol of prosperity, meaning humans uh, were productive, they were life producing, animals were healthy, their udders were full, there was a lot of baby animals. And so the, the milk was flowing, it was just a, a life producing people. Uh, then the honey would be stand for like the honeybees that are pollinating, meaning uh, there was a process of sowing and the seasons of growth and then the harvest and the, the bees would be pollinating. It, there was growth, there was fruitfulness. So a land flowing with milk and honey, but it's flowing, meaning it wasn't just one good harvest. It was a continual fruitfulness. How about you and your life with, with Christ? Is it flowing like a river or has it become kind of a stagnant pond? Uh, we want to be people who are, are flowing. We're not just dependent on one set of revival meetings or one experience, but to be a people who our lives are flowing with milk and honey. We're life producing and we're fruitful in our lives. That's the kind of Christian and believer that I want to be. So there has to come a time when you move on from milk to meat. Now milk will build your bones, that's good, but it's meat that will build your muscles. And you need both. You need both bones and you need muscle if you're going to make it. Otherwise, you won't last. You won't make it. So we need to move from milk to meat. Maybe a difference between a meaty believer and a milky believer. Uh, a, a milky believer, you, you get happy and excited uh, based on circumstances or situations. You had a good day at work. Uh, people were kind to you at church. And so you feel pretty good. You can be happy about that. But a meaty believer is somebody who even in the middle of difficulty, challenges, when things don't maybe go as planned, that you can still give thanks and you can still rejoice. You can still praise God when maybe bad things happen. There's just a, a, a deeper, some roots have grown down deeper. You, you're already convinced that you're saved, you're forgiven, that uh, approval from God is not based on how good you can be and how righteous you live. You're, you're already righteous because uh, you're, you're, you're covered with the blood of Jesus and you're wearing His robes of righteousness. You're no longer separated from God. You're no longer alienated from, for him, from him. You have a relationship with Him. And because of that, you can face the world that sometimes is uncertainty, but you can face it without being insecure and without hesitation because you know who you believe in and who is able to keep you uh, that which you've committed until that day. That's somebody who's rooted deeply in the things of God. And the devil hates that when you get that deep in God and that you can't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. I love what it says a few verses down in verse 19 of chapter 6 of Hebrews. It says this, This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for your souls. An anchor for your souls. It doesn't say that you won't have a storm. But it says that you will have an anchor for your soul, an anchor that grips into the rock. 
it, it, it won't grip into your feelings that are up and down. It won't grip into those, you know, what we would say, Holy Ghost goosebumps. They don't last long, but they grip into the profound truth of His Word, the truth that transcends your feelings, the truth that is, is there whether you feel up or whether you feel down. I mean, when you get that kind of Word up underneath you, man, nothing can take you down. If you build your faith on a person, they're going to disappoint you. You build your faith on a building or even a doctrine, man's best attempt at understanding God. You try to base your faith on a feeling, they're all going to change in times. I mean, you'll see gimmicks come and go. But if you want to be stable in an unstable world, you need to, be, you need to have this book and the principles within this book and build your faith on the solid rock of God's Word. I love what Paul said in Ephesians 1.19. He says this, I also pray that you will understand the exceeding greatness, exceeding greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. God's greatness is exceeding. God's not depreciating. He's appreciating. There's an increase, and we who have the power of God within us, there should be exceeding greatness coming through us. Not because we're great, but because we have a great message, we have the great power of the Holy Spirit, and all for His glory, there, sh there should be growth. There should be an exceeding greatness that flows through our life. And then I love what Paul said in Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verse 16. He says, I pray that that from His glorious unlimited resources, think about that, unlimited resources, we have disposal of unlimited resources in and of ourself, it's, we don't have it. That's why it's His unlimited resources and He will empower you with inner strength. There it is, inner strength through His Spirit. The first time that Moses saw God, God was a burning bush. The second time, he set the whole mountain on fire. He's greater with the second look than the first look. And he takes you from faith to faith, glory to glory. He's always unlocking, revealing new realms of himself and his glory and his anointing. Then none of us ever reach the point where we can say that we've received it all. And one of the most dangerous things that can happen is that we lose our appetite. We lose our thirst for God. God never feeds anybody who isn't hungry. I mean, if, if you cook for somebody and, I mean, they, they love the food, man, you're gonna, it's going to bring out the best cook in you, right? But if someone's always complaining, I don't like this and I don't like that, ooh, that texture's funny, it makes you not want to cook for them, right? The Bible says, Blessed is he who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. They will be filled. And I believe all of us, but especially this next generation, they need something to sink their te teeth into because culture is feeding them junk food. And kids will eat junk food if that's what they're served. So how do we move from milk to meat? How do we do that? I think verse 14 tells us everything we need to know. Look what it says. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use, right there it is, constant use through practice. You know, most skills that we have in life, we're not born with those skills. Now, there may be certain talents and gifts and abilities, but you still have to develop them. Skills are developed. And our, our skill and our ability to succeed and to accomplish what God has for us it really depends on not just being blessed, but putting to practice. Constant use. That's how we develop those skills. And another great word here is they train themselves. They've trained their senses. Do you know you can train your senses? You can train your emotions. You are not powerless, but you can make sure that they are subject to your control through Christ. You can bring your thoughts, bring your emotions under submission to your will and to His will. That's what Paul was trying to teach the Corinthian church in uh, verse, chapter 10, verse uh, 5. He says this, We take captive the, their rebellious thoughts. We don't let them rule or reign us. No, we, 
We take them captive and then we teach them. We don't let them teach us how we're going to feel and how we're going to respond to life. No, we teach them to obey Christ. And that's why even Jesus taught us to pray, Your kingdom come, your will be done. Not my will, not my agenda, but your kingdom and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And really, I think the secret is it's that constant use and practice and training ourselves and teaching our emotions how they're going to feel and how we're going to respond to certain things. And really, the way we do that is, is really using the truth of God's Word. So you got to feed yourself some good, solid food. And there's no better food than, than the bread of life, the words of Jesus, the teachings of Scripture, memorizing maybe a verse or two every week and letting them get down in your spirit, meditate on them, marinate in them so that it just comes right out. The flavor of God comes right out through you, through His Word. Read some good books. There's so much out there. Uh, also, another way to go from milk to meat is to learn how to pray and, and what to pray. And really the most simple way to do that, you know, without preaching a whole sermon on it, I've done series, I've sermons on this over and over, but really is, is to do a prayer walk. <laughs> I did that yesterday. I was kind of in a funk sitting around and if I don't, if I'm not careful, I can let my mind just wander and it's so unproductive until I get up and I, and I go take a walk and I'll take some verses of scripture and I'll just meditate and I'll pray those through and I'll have a little talk with Jesus. And I had a little talk with Jesus and actually he did more talking to me than I did to him. But it, at first it was letting me to vent and, and of course the psalmist David was so good God, why this and why that? And he, it was just that kind of relationship. And God can handle it. But get up, take a prayer walk, and, and, uh, and, and learn to pray through the Scriptures. That's a great way to pray. And I think another way to move from milk to meat is to, to really be a conduit. Uh, help get others plugged in. Uh, don't be someone who just keeps feeding yourself. Uh, Start feeding others around you. Feeding them with an encouraging word. Why is it that you always have to be encouraged? Someone has to encourage you. Why not be the person who can encourage somebody else? Why is it that you always need to hear a word or, or from somebody or some kind of encouragement? Why can't you give a word? Why can't you be an encouragement to somebody else? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a way where, where we're just giving to others. Freely we have received, now freely give. Another way to move from uh, milk to meat is to, to get involved in one of our connecting environments, one of our growth environments at Celebration. We have a lot of C groups, men's and women's Bible studies, student groups, places where you can grow, places where you'll sit in a circle instead of sit in rows. You'll do life together. Uh, opportunities for you to lead some of these connecting environments. And you'll find as you give, you get so much more back. That's another way you can move from milk to meat. Um, so as I wrap up, you know, what is God saying to you through this word? Where are you at? Um, and, and where does God want to take you? See, you have some choices here. What to do with this? You can feel guilty and do nothing. And maybe just click on to the next thing, find comfort in something because you, you just want to avoid doing the hard work, getting plugged in. So you can, it's, it's easy just to feel guilty and do nothing. Or you can get up and move. Get up and move. Do something. Do one thing. You know, take one verse of Scripture. When, when this is over and you have lunch, go on a walk by yourself with one little verse of Scripture and pray through that. And let God speak to you. He will reveal things to you. You'll be so glad that you did. And understand that Jesus' words are true. And I'll close with this one right here. That blessed, happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled. They will be satisfied. So, are you milky? Or are you meaty? All right, come on. 
put it in the chat window now. Where are you? And where does God want to take you from here? Would you allow me to pray with you for a moment? Father, I pray for every single person who's listening right now. Your Holy Spirit has already done a convicting work, not a condemning work, but a convicting work for those to say, I'm not where I need to be spiritually, but I want to be. Help me to get unstuck. Make your confession now. Father, forgive me for doing things my way, for replacing you uh, with other things. I repent of that right now. God, give me your strength and power. Infuse me with your Holy Spirit and anointing and motivate me to grow and to experience you in a greater way and to be a person who helps others to experience you. So, Father, thank you for your touch right now in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And for those of you who would say, you know what, I'm not even a baby Christian. And for some reason, you're still listening. And this is your opportunity. God is saying, I haven't forgotten about you. I want to invite you to be in my family. Do you know that? God wants you to be a son of his and a daughter of his. He wants to be in relationship with you because he has such great things in store for you. And some of you listening right now, you know that if life is to continue on the way it is, there's not a lot of hope for a very good future. Why don't you change that? Come into relationship with your Heavenly Father and He will help you. He will save you and He'll give you a hope and He'll give you a future. It's really simple. It's simply saying, God, forgive me my sin. I need you in my life. I want you in my life. I invite you into my life. He'll begin a relationship with you and He'll give you a hope and He'll give you a future. Would you do that right now with me? Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life right now. I know I don't understand a lot about the Bible, prayer, church, but Lord, would you help me take some baby steps? And maybe this is that first step that I can take towards you. You've been moving towards me in such a beautiful way. I respond to you. I receive you into my life right now. I, I, I want to be a Christian. Forgive me of my sin. I come to you right now. Thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that simple prayer, that's the first step. You're already a child of God. But I don't want to leave you just out there as, a, as an infant. I want to help guide you. So connect with us right in the chat window. Uh, Person, you know, send us a message, call the church. We'll meet with you, with you this week and help guide you in the next steps. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in today.